everyone. Welcome to the Game Dev London podcast, a community of game developers and game enthusiasts talking about all the th one thing that they love the most, games. Uh, my name is Nicola Humphreys. You can refer to me as she, her, and I'll be your host for today. And today I'm for joined by a fellow GDL hosts, Mafalda and Merrick. Hi, guys. Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you all. Hello. <laughs> nice hello. to meet you as well. <laughs> so before we start off uh, the episode, I you, you guys are quite new to the Game Dev London uh, space, so why don't you guys introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah, I can go first. My name is Mafalda Dwart. Um, I'm a producer and studio director uh, here in Lisbon, uh, Portugal, and I just joined uh, Game Dev London to like bring a bridge together <laughs> to both <laughs> of our communities, so it's exciting. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Marek. Um, I'm a video game composer. Uh, and I'm based up in Liverpool, and I'm sort of joined GDL in the same way, sort of similar intentions as Mafalda. We're sort of bridging uh, kind of two communities together, and now maybe even three communities with Lisbon as well. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I feel like with the GDL, even though it is uh, Game Dev London, uh, everyone is so far in different spaces all across the UK and, and also in uh, different countries. So it's it's great to have that expansion even though london is on the title yeah i i think oh we have the same goals of being like a local community that is open internationally right is it we are just open to different sides of our countries and different sides of the world uh, because yeah devs from london or from lisbon are everywhere and uh, we want to be connected so it's fun no, exactly. Yeah, and I feel like Game Dev is such like a, a nice space to, to bring everyone together, both virtual and IRL. Yeah, no, I thought it was quite funny how um, GDL is Game Dev London, but it also could stand for Game Dev Lisbon and also Game Dev Liverpool as well. I think it's just a happy place. <laughs> cities starting with L. Yeah. I, actually, I, I already told him the other one. Like, I, I, I decided on Game Dev Lisbon because of you guys when I was here in March. Uh, for uh, We went to a meetup uh, next to the London Eye, and I was like, yeah. I should even just steal your logo, guys. <laughs> and we were like having that <laughs> conversation and being funny about it. But uh, uh, eventually, like, it just made sense that we are named after like our local communities, and then we're open uh, everywhere else. So it's like super fun that, <laughs> that we have like now. It's like TDL is for stands for every 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 single country that has L, L in it. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, before we jump into the topic of conversation, which uh, we've teased about a little bit with game dev events, uh, I'd love for you guys to tell yourselves a little bit more, uh, tell the audience about yourselves a little bit more, <laughs> sorry. Um, so my icebreaker question to you guys would be, if you had to be part of any video game universe, which would it be and why? Uh, should I go first? You you go go first? first. Yeah, yeah, go first. <laughs> Me, okay. Um, uh, well, I guess it depends. So I love, I, so my favorite kind of games at the moment are all the super giant games, uh, Bastion, Transistor, Hades. But I feel like living in the world of Hades probably. Not fun. <laughs> might not be great. So I think I'd probably just, if it's just about living there, I'd probably go somewhere pretty, pretty plain, pretty boring. But something like Animal Crossing, I think, would, would, would suit me just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had the same answer as you, Marek, uh, but... <laughs> oh, no, sorry. No, no, but <laughs> I prepared my own, right? So I just went to, to preface my answer with saying that, yeah, I would never live in a place where people are killing each other because I like <laughs> to live. Um, <laughs> and my pick is The Sims, because that's the only world where you can start broke, follow your dreams, and still buy a house. So Sims is my, <laughs> is my answer. This no, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, like, I like... With, with The Sims, it's it's still possible to kill other Sims, but it's less expected. Yeah, but you can date death, you can turn back from it, you can extend your life with potions. There's, like, a lot of ways that you can have a long, happy life. <laughs> that's with The Sims as well. You can just turn off the, the aging process and be like, I'm just going to 
I'm just going to practice this skill forever. It's fine. And, and you can <laughs> die when you're bored out of it. You know, like you don't you don't want to be like a vampire that never dies. Like that's kind of boring at some point. You know, then you are like, oh, what is death? You need to have that edge. Like you can die, but at the same time, is like you can cheat death a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> What about yeah, yours, Scala? You need to. Oh, you need mine? To, yeah, what would yours yeah. be? Yeah. Oh, no, I feel like I've never asked this question to myself before. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the episodes that I've asked guests, we've had a lot of uh, answers like Animal Crossing and, and Final Fantasy because they're, they're just beautiful games to live in. Um, but me personally, hmm, this is a good point. I should have thought about this. <laughs> um, a game, I guess, I've been playing recently, which I love the franchise so much and it's just so pretty to look at would be horizon zero dawn um just because of the uniqueness of all the creatures and the the visuals of all the different areas so like all the snowy biomes versus like the foresty biomes i don't feel like i could ever get bored of just sitting there and just watching the world go by with giant mechanical dinosaurs going past in the distance Oh, I mean, good. ideally, yeah, I would want to fight them. Yeah, but if they are in the distance, I've... like, you're good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a way more exciting answer. <laughs> I feel yeah. like... We are so maybe... boring. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Maybe I should have just, yeah, maybe I should have just gone with Hades anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with Hades, you do get a two-headed dog. Uh, I, be I believe it's two-headed dog um, as a pet, so I'm all uh, for that. Yeah, and technically, yeah. well, it depends on who you are. You can keep coming back to life so but it's kind of tiresome you need to... yeah and you know they're all about home renovations you know you can yeah stuff and you around. can decorate the underworld so so you kind of get a bit of animal crossing but maybe yeah. with a bit more <laughs> animal bit crossing more but we're fighting in it <laughs> yeah that's basically that basically perfectly sums up hades like... <laughs> yeah. oh guys hiring us our host like we are great for communication of your game <laughs> well with that let's uh jump into the uh the topic of conversation for this episode not i mean i would happily sit down and talk about hades and video games all day uh, <laughs> um but yeah with the topic of conversation it offered today on this episode uh is the importance of game dev events uh so yeah game dev events are things that put are events that uh, game developers can go to, whether they're in the industry or not. They can make connections, play exclusive games, uh, and you can even access them digitally as well. So my question to you guys would be, why should people attend game dev events? Um, I, I, th I think the straight up answer is just like to be in tune with whatever is happening in the industry, right? Like I think events are like the big uh, times of the year where you can know exactly what the state of art is, who are like up and coming people that are like having these new ideas and communicating them, um, new games uh, happening around the way people are thinking about them. So so yeah, I think first and foremost is just like to keep up with the industry and secondly, to be a part of it by networking with everyone <laughs> there. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree, I think. What, what's great about events now is that there are so many and they're so varied as well. Um, so you can, people can go as fans, people can go as developers and people can go as everything else kind of in between. And there's kind of something for everyone, especially at the sort of the, the larger kind of well-known events like EGX and um, other mm -hmm. things. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like EGX is a great uh, event to highlight just because it usually occurs right after Comic-Con, which is a, a massive event in, a, in and of itself, uh, but it's less game dev focused, whereas EGX is more for game developers, by game developers, and uh, you're still able to buy cool exclusive things like Pokemon cards, because I know that I usually rate EGX for Pokemon cards, uh, as well as attending talks and uh, gaining like a, a larger network of people and just, yeah, just checking out the latest trends in video games and seeing people display their up and coming games as well. So it's, it's, it's a great event to attend. And it's also cheaper than Comic-Con. So yeah. I'm, I'm all for <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> 
Yeah. That's the same thing with us and Lisboa Games Week um, and Comic Con. Yeah. Oh, you could go, go, Mar. Yeah, I just love how. No, so I just love how things like EGX are. It's a real sort of celebration of games as mm. well, in in all their kind of forms as well, like board games as well, um, like role playing games, video games. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I so, feel yeah. like when I, I I really like AGX. I keep going. Sorry. sorry. No, yeah, like I, I I always go to AGX, whether it's AGX the big one at uh, Excel or the AGX Rest, because uh, uh, they're so much fun to attend. And as well as talking about games, there's always a, a highlight of game dev groups as well. So I always know that there's like a a, a game dev London group that always rocks up, uh, as well as like women in games and and she plays games so they always there's always like a a, a huddle of uh, game dev game dev communities that always attend these events so it's a, a a warming place to be for game dev knowledge and just game devs yeah i would say like it doesn't need to be like a game dev centric event right because uh, we, as you're describing it it's sometimes a lot of these events are also like btc like it's just for consumers and people that are playing games and families that are going to uh show up and bring their kids to to see games uh but the fact that there is like this game centric event happening around makes develop uh, a point of meetup with with that with us and and i think it, all, it is going to happen all across the world so even if you and, and sometimes even if in a location you don't have like specific events for game dev or like specific like talks events and things like that um it's more common to have maybe like a comic-con type of thing or something that is more just like games exist here, <laughs> come and see. Uh, and, and it's a way to developers to like hang out and gather around and uh, and have a place of their own as well. So so yeah, I think that's a very important topic that you guys brought up. No, oh, yeah, that's that's a, that's a great point because I remember in the last EGX that I did even see families walking around who would uh, went to comic-con and went oh, i think we wanted something more game focused and then they went to egx and said and they mentioned they had a way better experience because they could actually sit down uh, and not be shoulder to shoulder with people and just enjoy playing games and meeting people who make games as well yeah so i'm, I'm curious do you guys say that you're uh very big into game dev events i'm curious if you have ever participated in setting up a game dev event uh, yeah, so for me, it, I think the first thing I joined as like a specific game dev event was Game Dev Camp in 2014, like the first edition that existed in, in, in Lisbon. And and now I organize Game Dev Camp for this year and, and the last two Game Dev Camps digitally. Um, so it's been like a great experience to go from participant in those types of things and then uh, be uh, the promoter of one. Um, and and in game dev camp is it's something a little bit bigger because it, it, it is it was our only um, developer focus event uh, in Portugal for a while. Now there's like a few schools starting to set up like game dev days or like game dev weeks or things like that uh, more and more. Uh, but back then that was like the only thing that existed and it started from developers in the community trying to set up something right. And, and so continuing that legacy, that legacy, it's some of the the most important uh, things that I think we can do for for the industry at the moment. It's just like how can we keep improving, uh, especially for us that we don't have uh, as a as a developed ecosystem as London, for example. Uh, it just it, it, I, th I think you would agree uh, Marek because like you're in Liverpool so maybe you have that that distancing right it's like if you're regionally in an area that doesn't have as much things then you need to be the person that makes them happen <laughs> and yeah I, yeah. <laughs> yeah no I it's a very very similar story to be honest I was um I went to a um like a game dev me a meeting in Liverpool and it was great i loved it but then i was quite sad that there was it was it's basically a a meetup that kind of travels around the country mm. so it travels around the uk so it's not liverpool specific but i just happened to catch it when it was there um i think it's called yuki hub crawl and um 
it was really really cool and i spoke to a couple of people from there and then added them on discord and then i went searching for more similar events and there was just nothing there at all um so i was like okay well there's people clearly go to these things so someone just needs to kind of start something um so the so with so yeah liverpool game dev meet has only been going on from this will be our fourth month um I think fourth. we started in August and then we missed a month. I can't see you do the maths. And then, um, <laughs> uh, and it, I originally thought, so I just reached out to the two or three people that I met at this one um, event and they, um, and so I was kind of for the first meetup, it was just at, at a bar and I was just expecting four of us to, to attend and there, something like 12 or 13 people showed up. Oh, that's great. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, yeah, and I didn't know the, the majority of them, which is which is great because it shows that there's a there was a real there's a real demand for it in Liverpool, and I think um, it's just kind of growing from strength to strength now. Um, yeah, and yeah, like my, yeah, sorry, my father, what you're saying? No, I was going to say that that that's a very I think this is so important. It's so like guys, if you don't take any anything else away from our podcast, take that that experience that is just set up something with like the three or four friends that you have and like people will come. Uh, because for example, again, Lisbon already had like a, because it's the capital of, of Portugal, already had like a, a some uh, things happening, already had people making uh, meetups. But when I moved away to Couvillé, which is like three hours away, it's like a smaller town. Um, there was nothing happening there, but there's like a university because I was doing my master in game design there. And I was like, well, if there's a master, uh here then there must be students and professors like people around games that want to have that experience but the, but it was like oh no one is showing up and or like this is too small or there's like even though there's like students there's not too much students interest in developing community rest or for some reason whatever and and i think just taking away that fear of being like a small thing and it's like, well, if it's three of us, it's it is a game dev meet. If it's four of us, it's a game dev meet. And it's if it's twenty or sixty, it's already it, it is the same thing. It's it's like how many developers you need to <laughs> to be together to call it a meet. Uh, you know, um, enough to not be just you. <laughs> no, that makes a total sense. Like uh, recently, I went to the limit break closing ceremony, and there were so many people who unfortunately weren't able to attend because they were so far away. So having these small little communities set up in different places across the world really helps draw everyone together, um, especially for large events in London that uh, people might not be able to attend to. At least there's still like small, uh, smaller events that people can still still go to. So that's, that's great. And uh, you mentioned yeah, that you I... set up the... Uh... Oh no, so go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's this connection. I think there's a bit of a delay. No, um, I was just going to say, um, I think knowing just, yeah, like my father said, having those, uh, even if it's just three or four people, if it, having an outlet to kind of share your passion with other people is, I think, really invaluable. Um, whether you're a student or whether you're looking for work or whether you're already in work, having people's kind of basically nerd out with right and and <laughs> just and kind of share yeah and share that passion uh, with other people I think for me it's been amazing um seeing the kind of reaction in Liverpool but also with like online communities as well there's just so much out there and you just have to kind of either find it or try and start something yourself and people will kind of gravitate towards it yeah, I, I totally agree with that like uh, there's been a few communities that I've joined online uh who are based all across the world and usually in the introduction uh, channel on either Discord or a Slack. Um, I, I usually say, hi, I'm Nicola, nice to meet you. I'm from, uh, I work at Sharpmob, do the Game Dev London podcast uh, and a few hobbies include like manga and, and watching anime and stuff. And there's usually a few people who respond and say, oh my God, me too. And then that's how the small connections grow into like larger connections because then there's there's a place that we can just geek out and and talk about games and and other interests as well. So uh, it's great to have both IRL events as well as digital events to to form those bonds. 
but yeah, because you guys have, have have made game dev events yourselves, I'm curious, what do you feel are characteristics that define a game dev event? Hmm. Well, definitely having devs there, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I, I, I think when when main thing, I don't, I don't, I don't really love the word of like defining a game dev event because I think it it can be different things. Uh, but I'm thinking about the ones that we've made, like you know, what game jams are, what uh, game dev meets are, um, what are like talks events or other things i think whenever it's dev oriented there's always this element that networking and knowledge sharing are the most important thing because even if it's a game jam right it, it's about that coming together and sharing that knowledge as a team and uh, and networking with each other with different people that you might not have worked before and, and trying to to go there so so yeah i think that those two are always on my mind when setting up one but then yeah, it's uh, like, if if you do awards, it's a game dev event anyway. And it's, well, it's a little bit about knowledge sharing, right? In the sense that you are knowing who who is doing what and, and getting together. Yeah, well, it's like you said earlier, my father, about kind of being in touch with what's happening in the industry is that kind of, and and yeah, even if that is just meeting with a few people and discussing what was in the news in the like what or like the latest game release or something. Mm. Um and yeah, they take on so many different forms. Um I know there's one there's there's one in Manchester, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like it's almost like a club event. Okay. Where so it's like they have like like um people dressed in big kind of like tron suits doing that like dancing and it's like, it's oh, like wow. in a club. <laughs> that's amazing yeah, but, then, but, but then they've got a whole showcase of games of brand new games and i actually met a dev <laughs> at egx that was on the show floor who was able to show his game on the um at this club kind of networking game dev meet as well i thought it was really cool so the, yeah it just can take so many different forms um so i guess what mafalda was saying about sort of networking and knowledge sharing and kind of having that shared passion um, and just connecting on with, with people, with like-minded people. I think that's, as long as those that core is there, then you can call anything a game dev meet, I guess. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's about people that love making games or, or like the art of game making, because yeah, you can, I, th I think that's a different part, right? Because there's, for example, uh, I, I think my, one of my things is, I don't identify much as a gamer in sense of I don't it's not that I don't play like I, I, I am a gaming nerd in that sense it's just with gamer culture uh, of like obsessing over like a game or a game world or a story or like just like being there but I love to obsess about how how is that made like how did they make the, that thing or what uh, the different you know experience that games that players are having through that that game making skills or whatever and so I think that's a little bit of what distinguish if you are in a game dev group versus like a gamer conversation or event or or whatever. Um, I, I, I think you talk about different things around games if you have those, those different mindsets. Yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. Like it's almost seeing behind the pixels to be like, how how is this made sort of thing? <laughs> Because um, there's always been a fascination, like like I've always had a fascination of what happens behind the curtains, and it's very interesting being in the industry for uh, over uh, a year and a half now, which doesn't sound like much, but uh, it, it still counts. <laughs> um, like just knowing how things work, and now opening up new games and and seeing how they would reproduce a problem or fix a problem or. Uh, or make a specific game mechanic. I'm like, I think I know how they make that now. And it's it's nice to have all those puzzle pieces of coming together rather than just like playing the experience, even though the experience is super fun. It's it's nice to know how the magic happens of that yeah. experience. And, and yeah, I'll say, and I love, no, go, go, go. Uh, no, I love seeing um, or hearing about different devs' understandings of the, of the same game. Mm -hmm. So, because you've got so many specialisms that go into just one game. You, 
Uh, so, so for example, as a composer, my experience for a game will be completely different to the I don't know the combat designer or the um, the dialogue editor or something like, which is how all come from such a different um, angle on the same project. And so it's really cool to hear about how other people experience games from these different angles and from these different specialisms. Now, I, I was just going to to connect what you'd said to what Nicola just said. That is, so you were like, oh, but I'm in the game industry for like a year and a half or whatever. But it's like, for me, I, I am technically in the game industry for three years in terms of like, that's when I started working in a game studio. Uh, but I am in the game dev community since 2014 uh, because I was already interested in the mechanics of making games and uh, in uh, what what are people doing, what the industry is like in here, and uh, that's why I made like a little bit of the distinction of it's not it's not about people that make games, but people that think about making games or that had that experience or want to have it or are looking for it. Uh, because I think that's a very cool thing in in game and game the like game in game spaces is that we are I think we are more open to up and coming people in a sense that other industries because my experience before was what in the animation industry and it's a little bit more closed off it's a little bit more uh, hard to 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 get in with when you know in games you can be like zero experience and go to a game jam and you're doing games with someone that have done that before. Um, and I think that's like one of the like the special things about uh, being in this industry is that you have those uh, those little opportunities uh, of connection and of uh, knowledge sharing. Yeah, I uh, I totally agree with that. Like, uh, despite being in the industry for only a small amount of time. Before that, I was uh, making game jams and going to these events. So even before I had like a professional label attached to me, <laughs> um, I was still going to all these events and trying to build out that network and uh, just finding communities that had game developers in them to be like, hey, how do I join the industry? Or um, what would be your solution to approaching X, Y, and Z? And um, hey, I've made, I've made this project what do you guys think so even just like getting feedback it's a small thing but it's it um it really helps uh grow individuals who have not yet entered the industry so it's a great way of like tying everyone who loves game development together whether professional or not unprofessional just like not in yet <laughs> but with different types of events there's usually like there's all kinds of different game events, like you guys have mentioned before. Um, and one of the key features are usually networking. And in the UK, we usually have uh, events such as EGX or Develop Brighton and Insomnia Games. So I'd be curious, what kind of events do you guys specifically go for for networking? And do you have a highlight from attending these networking events? Uh, I think, so. so this year, um, I've I've gone in terms of like the bigger events. I've been to EGX and I also flew to um, to Poland for uh, GIC. It's either GIC or GDC. GIC. GIC. Yeah, um, and that was that was like the first big uh, networking event where it was sort of all people within the industry. So that, so there weren't kind of it wasn't like a show floor or anything. It was just loads of talks. And so it's a very different experience to EGX. Um, but I think the in terms of networking and where I felt networking could it, it was the easiest to do, I guess, at least for me personally, was in the kind of the after events, right? So um, like like uh, when I first met the people from Game Dev London, it was actually at EGX this year after at like 6 p.m. when the show floor had closed and everyone had gone to the pub and we all met there because they were doing a, um, I think it was Kwang and Jade were doing uh, some talks. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's kind of where I felt the networking was the easiest for me was in actually afterwards because I find trying to approach developers on the show floor is very different because <laughs> they're so busy and they're seeing hundreds and thousands of people over the course of like four days 
And when I first, so when I first went to EGX, I was, I think, 18 or 19. And I just went in and was like, hi, here's my, <laughs> like, here's my stuff. Mm. Bye. And then, and then obviously I, they, I'd never hear from them again. Because <laughs> it's like, um, so yeah, it's, it's finding that environment where people are happy to talk to you and not having to, to, it's knowing when to get the timing right, I guess, as well. Yeah, for me, it was going to uh, DEF CON, GamesCon 2019. Um, it was the first time I went to an event uh, as big outside of, of Portugal. And, in the, and it is like the biggest in Europe. So it was like, so, whoa, there are so many floors and so many <laughs> things and there's so many people. Uh, and and I went I went alone, but then as soon as I landed, I found all the Portuguese <laughs> groups. So I kind of, I had like a support group of friends that I knew there, but then I collect like a bunch of, of cards and I'm, I met so many people and, and it, it was the, the most fun I ever had. And um and I went as like just like a freelance studio artist. Uh, back then, I wasn't still a producer, and uh, but that was the thing that opened the doors for me to to work at Nerd Monkeys and to start a career in, in in games. Because then, just just being me around uh, Gamescon and connecting to people, uh, and 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 actually like going outside of Portugal with Portuguese that then saw the talent and say, oh. I think you would be great working for my company, <laughs> and 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 so I I really loved that 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 is like a particular experience because of that. Um, but I I have been to other events that wasn't like only game developer focused before. For example, um, again, well, I I attend uh, Trojan Horse was a unicorn in, in Portugal, was which is like a big event, but it's focused on um, on artists. And you have people, you know, from animation, from uh, VFX, uh, from games, but in their artist perspective. And I think I connect a little bit more. And and I was like in the, in the smaller events, right? Like Game Dev Camp, as I described before. Uh, but but suddenly connecting with this big dev only international uh, community was it was it felt so big and so small at the same time because you you when you start going to a different to different events. Now I've been to a bunch of them, to Pocket Gamer, to to London Festival, um, uh, to Was, um, and uh, to to more games. Gone. <laughs> and at some point, you you start to see a lot of the same people or people that you start to recognize online, and and all of that like makes you feel like you're part of this big thing that is actually like small islands everywhere. And, uh, and yeah, that's what I love about connecting with with game people. Yeah, it's always fun to like make connections on people online and then seeing them in person to be like, oh, wow, you have actual shoes. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> like, uh, just building that connection and then having that uh, IRL uh, connection. <laughs> it's always like a great thing to have. And then and the IRL the as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And even like the, the opposite way around. So having an IRL meetup and then seeing them online and digital and uh and then seeing what they're up to and just then yeah then expanding upon that digital connection as well like uh i remember this year there was because I, I managed to attend develop brighton and it was it was super fun uh, and it was nice to not attend it in the cold because i remember the year before it was uh more in october so it was a little bit chilly <laughs> um but this year it was more based in like the summertime so it was nice to see game dev sort of relaxing on like the very pebbly beach of brighton <laughs> and uh heading to the loading bar which is a, a great game dev or not game dev, but a uh, gaming bar and they were handing out like a free drink so it was almost encouraging people to to sort of relax and not have to worry about the talks that are going on and just be like hey, just just make a friend sit down on the bench yeah. and and, and vibe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I connected your experience with, uh, so again, Gamescon 20, uh, 2019 was, was, was a, like a big event for me. Um, and it was the first time I connected with uh, Women in Games. Uh, they had the breakfast, like Women in Games breakfast. And I, the first thing that I noticed and I loved it, it was 
it was open for everyone to register, but giving priority to uh, to women. And and then at the breakfast itself, it was like there was like a lot of round tables, and you could have your little uh, biscuits in the morning and your croissants or whatever. And you would just like sit sit around. And the thing was, every table was named after like a specialization in the industry, like engineering and production and art and whatever. And there was like this woman leading the discussion. And it was only that. So it was like only like that. That was already super impactful for me. Like the fact that like women were letting an event that was open for everyone. Uh, be because sometimes you can see like if it's like women exclusive events, of course, like there's only women there. But then you can see like uh, men around the table and they were they were participating in the discussion, but they were being led by those women that they were in those positions uh, in the industry talking about their expertise. Uh, and I think that's like something that you also have uh, in these types of events that kind of uh, marks you for life because you're like you see those. Uh, like you can do that one day <laughs> and you have those connections that's that's very good yeah and I remember uh at the at the same develop Brighton that I went to this year there was an event I went to that was organized by the save point community mm -hmm. and they when you walked in there it was also round tables and there was like a like a a food set up as well but on each of the table there was a little pamphlet that said how to network and one of the top questions was ask if they have pets and I was like oh I like the fact that it's it's not even mentioning game development even though we are all game developers here it's just like oh we'll just get to know each other and just build up a, a connection through our fluffy companions <laughs> but whether they are digital or a real <laughs> but yeah it was it was nice to just have that um sort of list to, to have that comfort when you're networking with people because like even when I, I started out in the games industry it was so hard to approach people uh, like you said Merrick before uh, and just be like hi this is my portfolio this is who I am please hire me thank you very much uh, and then walk away whereas like it was nice to yeah nice to just have a, a chill environment so you didn't have to worry about um putting on the professional game dev face and just be like ah oh, you know my my cat's named after Harry Potter. Like it's, it's, it was a nice, nice experience. But uh, with some of these uh, networking events, there also usually tends to be award ceremonies as well. So I know that um, Develop Brighton has a award ceremony, and um, and there's award ceremony focused events such as the BAFTAs and the Games Award and the GamesCon like you mentioned before Mafalda. So um, do you guys have a fond memory of watching a game dev award ceremony or just an award ceremony with games? Uh, not, I mean, so I don't, I don't tend to watch them. I don't know if that's, if that makes me a terrible person or not. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think it's I think it's great celebrating um, different specialisms and really people being recognised for their work. Um, I've just I, I just have never sort of sat down and sort of actively watched like a live show. Like I, I might it might come up on my Twitter feed that someone's won or someone's been nominated that I know, and and I just give them congrats and, and props and everything, and which is great. And um, so they are great. I just don't particularly watch them. <laughs> No, that might just, I think that might just be me. <laughs> uh, well, actually, like, I, I'm a little bit like you. Like, I have, I, I don't normally, like, watch award ceremonies, but I really want to be nominated for one thing one day. Uh, and so one thing that I did is, like, I created an award ceremony because that way I could have participated <laughs> in it. <laughs> and, and and yeah, so that's, like, my funnest mom memory of right now because it just happened uh like, I don't know, two weeks ago, three three weeks ago, uh, we organized the Spotlight Awards here in uh, in Lisbon, and it was about highlighting the industry around Portugal. And um, and and for me, what, what that award ceremony had in special, uh, I, I already participated in another one. Uh, PlayStation Talents have, have award ceremonies here uh, as well. I think now they're digitally, and I, I kind of, I, I go with that. I think it's just because they're more local, so they feel a little bit more close. And and that's sometimes something that you might be lost, right, Marek? It's like the reason why maybe we don't watch it is just because it's like, yeah, 
maybe we don't know the devs directly or like we know we know about the games of course and things like that but it's like it's not as a proximity thing as other things that we're describing um but for those since are more local and in the x as well like i have accompanied a little bit of those uh award ceremonies um but for spotlight awards what i what i loved about it is that it was more about celebrating people that are not used to be celebrated and i think that it extends to others i think definitely that might stand to uh women in games awards and um uh and, and a lot of just like game awards around the world because like yeah now they're big <laughs> but we're not that big before and i think and, and and you know like game developers weren't even be credited uh for the longest time and and i think those little ceremonies are an opportunity to show i, I remember on the bafta this this year it was this year that uh, unpacking one um i believe that, so yeah yeah and just like see them because i i met them in the bafta nominee party uh i didn't attend the awards but like but but then i follow up the awards a little bit and 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 they it was so special to see them win because then you have those connections right then you met the developers and then you were like so excited for them you're like oh they really deserve to win and and it was like so awesome and and i think the they are a very important moment to, to celebrate people that are not used to be celebrated uh elsewhere especially like again times are changing but the media normally doesn't look at games in a in a fun way and you know like our parents <laughs> and the people around <laughs> us and yeah when whenever we are in this like bubble uh of our community it's like we have like rock stars of our community but if you go outside <laughs> you you don't have that uh <laughs> so yeah i think that's the most fun memory for me it's just celebrating developers that i know or celebrating projects that i know or and and see them win i i, I think that's just like so heartwarming and uh, yeah yeah, like I remember going to just a small award ceremony. I think it was more of a game jam ceremony. And uh, Zarum, the the makers of Disco Elysium, were there, and they were participating in this game jam because the game had not yet been greenlit. Um, so it was interesting. Then watching them a few years afterwards, being on the stage of BAFTA, and I was like, I've met them. They're really nice. And, <laughs> and um, then seeing them grab an award for the game that they worked super hard on, and it was it was kind of strange seeing that but it was also kind of like a pat on the back for them to be like yeah you guys did it you deserved that it was a really good game yeah and i think um something that's so great about the game dev community in particular i feel is just there is so much positivity and there is at least it like it feels like everyone wants everyone to win <laughs> <laughs> like at least at least maybe amongst the maybe not at the like the very very top with all the triple a's that are battling out for the top spot but um amongst so many other sort of communities and people there seems to be a real outpouring of encouragement and engagement and kind of a genuine want for people to kind of help each other mm. and 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 things like award ceremonies are kind of a perfect example of that i think and the fact that there are so many smaller ones as well like the ones that Mafalda's sort of helped set up and it's given me ideas now maybe we should have one in Liverpool as well at some point yeah we can talk about it <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah I think I think it's really cool and um that's just something that like one of the reasons why I love the community in general is is that outpouring of positivity and wholesomeness I guess <laughs> yeah yeah, like I, I totally agree with that. Even uh, digital ceremonies such as such as game jams. Like I remember I participated in the GMTK game jam uh, earlier this year and just saying that I participated in the game jam and then watching everyone sort of hype up that game, uh, it was really wholesome to see. And then even though we didn't get close to the top 
10 uh, that were announced by the the organizer it was it was still super nice to have that positivity and wholesomeness of everyone else sort of like pushing us up to be like you did it this was a great game uh, so it was it was lovely to, to, to see that and I feel like with with game with award ceremonies uh, for game developers and for games it it's can be difficult sometimes as well because they are usually hosted in America, but like you said, there are we're now expanding to different countries, so it's it can be more of a local time. So, for example, with the upcoming Game Awards, which are happening next week of this recording, it's probably happened by the time this episode comes out, but you never know. <laughs> uh, it starts at uh, I believe it's mm, somewhere around midnight, and then and doesn't end till like three a.m. So it's it's difficult to see the awards that do get given. Um, if you're watching it live, so it's nice to now have those experiences that we can experience <laughs> uh, more closer to home, so we don't have to worry about having five different coffees just to stay up to watch it. <laughs> yeah, and there's always YouTube highlights afterwards as well. <laughs> oh no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's normally what I do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always nice to sleep <laughs> and watching uh, Jeff Keighley talk about a new game at in the morning it's, it's kind of hard to concentrate yeah <laughs> but um usually with announced with the uh, usually with award ceremony such as the game awards um and uh sometimes some game fest as well they usually come with like a load of new announcements uh other events that more focused announcements are usually e3 uh, which had a massive oh, yeah. following for the yeah <laughs> they say they're coming back but we yeah. all know they're not <laughs> it's like one piece finishing we know that it's going to finish one day but it's, yeah. it's not going to finish yeah. <laughs> uh but <laughs> are there any upcoming announcements that you guys are looking forward to or any announcements that you thought were super up there with uh just being awesome <laughs> in, in terms of like new games yeah, new games and uh, upcoming updates, maybe. Uh, I mean, I love The Witcher Three, so I can't <laughs> wait to play the updated Witcher Three <laughs> for the uh, like, next gen. Um, Breath of the Wild Two as well. I'm super, super hyped for that as well. Um, but yeah, that, those are like the two things on my radar at the moment. That, I mean, there are plenty of others, obviously. I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't really watch a lot of like the the, the announcements. I I think I watch more award ceremonies than announce because it's at that gamer thing, right? Uh, it's more about just like hi, this game is coming out, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Whenever it's out, I'll play it. <laughs> uh, but uh, like Nintendo, like the the indie world uh, show, it's always something that it's. Uh, I like to see the post thing. When people are like, "Oh, this is a good game," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll go rewatch the, <laughs> the thing and uh, and see all the cute games coming up and the awesome uh, directs as well." Um, I, I I am really fond of starting to see more um, highlights in this announcement games of things that weren't considered um, true games to them to the mainstream audience like a few just a few years ago. So having something like a wholesome direct, I think it's like it's a great uh, uh, positive thing. Just to, not not like to have this instead of uh, E3 or or whatever. It's just like to have this on top of all the other things that we have. That we have a corner where you can highlight some some type of games that sometimes, if they were in a highlights of like a E3, would be like, oh, this is uh, this was a bad E3 because it was just like indie games and not enough triple A's or whatever. And so to have something more direct for different types of communities and different types of consumers. Um, that's, that's a part that I'm really excited about, like the new way that we are announcing uh, games and that we are looking at audiences. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. So with the game awards that are coming up, the game dev fans and, and, and gamers alike that could vote for their favorite games. And it's it's difficult to vote for an indie game when it's up against a AAA title, uh, especially if it's for, for Game of the Year, because um, I saw that Slime Ranch 2 had popped up for quite a few of the nominations. And, oh, I want that game to win so badly. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games. And it's it's difficult to, 
to guarantee a win for that game if it's put up against put up against uh, a AAA uh, game title, for example, like Call of Duty for, for some reason. <laughs> uh, and yeah, just larger game because it's it's such an, a smaller game that probably wouldn't reach AAA audiences as much, but it still deserves just as much, if not more, love than uh, games such as Call of Duty and stuff. So I don't feel like I could have clicked the button harder than <laughs> when I was uh, nominating the Slime Rancher game. <laughs> yeah, I think having the different sort of more kind of understanding the nuances and the the, the different types of audiences and games that there are that are out there, because it's like um, if I was saying before, it's like games are an art form in my opinion, and and I think they it covers just the whole spectrum, and so yeah, something like the BAFTA nominations and the, like. It, they're they're only ever really going to award them to the triple A's unless some mm-hmm. um, there's something like brand new that comes out. But I think um, yeah, having these other awards that celebrate all the other types of games that are out there are super important. All the way from game jam level to kind of indie level, mobile, and then sort of everything. Because um, yeah, you can't you can't there's you can't generalize. I think there's just too much. There are too many types of games out there. To general, like generalizing them in that way would kind of do the games industry a disservice. I think. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, it's always nice when there's like award categories for indie game of the year because then you do have that opportunity to highlight the indie games that did come out this year that really deserve loving, like. Uh, Code of the Lands, I know it's got nominated as well for a few other awards, and that was a fantastic game. That, amazing um, soundtrack. I'm sorry, oh, just, the soundtrack is just amazing. <laughs> sorry, carry on. <laughs> okay, I remember when that first got announced, I was like, I need to play this game immediately. And then as soon as I got it, I would just, I think I just binged it for like two days straight. <laughs> I was like, I can't get enough of this game, even yeah. though it does have like a an ending, I don't want it to end. <laughs> and like, I. I noticed before you mentioned that it's almost like an art form to um, highlighting games. And I feel like there's also an, an art form to announcements as well. So uh, one of my favorite announcements to date, there might be an even cooler announcement in the future. You never know. Um, but when the first God of War came out of n- not the original God of War, but the God of War 2018, and there was like an orchestra all set up. I believe it was at E3, but I might be getting that wrong um but there was an orchestra set up and it was all snowy in the audience and um it wasn't until like 30 seconds into the trailer that you actually saw that it was a god of war trailer because it was just like all mountainous and there was sort of harmonious orchestras playing and that was probably one of my favorite announcements that got announced um and i find myself just looking back on that announcement sometimes on youtube and being like ah that was so cool (laughs) So, yeah, like uh, it's 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 interesting watching these events when they're a balance between award ceremonies and uh, announcements, and if people are able to go to them, it's also a mixture of networking as well. So, um, I'm curious for you guys, uh, what has been one of your fondest memories of uh, attending one of a, a game dev uh, focused event? Uh, do you want to go with my father or should I? Uh, yeah, you can go first. Um, I'm trying to pick one. <laughs> yeah. One fondest memory. I think it's going to sound kind of cheesy, but it's just meeting new people. I just, I love meeting new people in the industry and just hearing about people's stories and why they got into the industry in the first place and what keeps them going in the industry. Why, what, what, it, what is it that kind of keeps, um, that like gives them, that kind of fire to, to, to carry on and motivates them. Um, and so, yeah, it's just at every event I've been to, it's always just meeting people more, more so than actually playing the games. <laughs> I think um, when I went to EGX, the, there, was, there was a day where I didn't play a single game. I was just talking to people. <laughs> and I think that might have actually been my favorite day <laughs> because <laughs> because of the people I was able to speak to and the connections you're able to make. So it's kind of a general one, but that's kind of, yeah, mine anyways. 
Okay, I think it's it's the same thing, but I have like a specific uh, I have different specific examples why meeting the people, it's so it's so special, um, because there's um, I think in every event that I went to, first I I don't like to play games in public because I'm terrible at it. I, so yeah, normally <laughs> I kind of know what you mean. I kind of know what you mean. So I'm a terrible person to be the one that you you need to to have there like oh play my game and like I will but please let me just like play it at home and just wish listen here <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, but there's like a, a bunch of times where for example um, skipping um, a talk that I might have planned to go to and just like hanging out with someone uh, transform the entirety of the event. Um, one of those times was in, in in Lisbon at one of the game dev camps. I think probably 2018 uh, that year. The um, uh, Greg Buchanan had just uh, made like this awesome talk about uh, uh, narrative design and um, and his writer writer journey. And, and after the talk, there was like this group of people uh, around, like some students asking questions, uh, things like that. And I remember I brought up something about uh, Florence being one of my favorite games at the, at the moment and um, uh, and what that was meant to me. And then uh, Max Pierce was there listening and he was like, oh, I saw what you said about that game. One of my friends uh, made, it, made it. And so I'll, I'll, I'll tell about it for to them and whatever. And so when we started talking, and then he was like, "Oh, uh, wait a second, let's let's have a uh, coffee." And then, um, but the uh, but I'll I'll grab my other friend, and the other friend was uh, um, ah Kristen Shihaya, like he's is uh, an art director, like uh, awesome person, like I love I love him to death, and um, and he, and he was like, "Oh, but this is like too late to coffee. Let's just have lunch." And we we're like, "Okay, let's have the other friend." And the other friend <laughs> uh, was uh, Rich from Offgrid, and um, he had just gave his talk, and he was like, "Okay, let's all go grab something for lunch." And and then we had the entire lunch just talking about life because uh, Rich just had like a little kid, and and Christian was proposing to his girlfriend at the time. They were going to get married and we we're talking about life uh, with each other and 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 just like getting to know us um in a very like grounded level like for me they're all i was still studying back then i was still not like in the industry and and it was nothing about that it was nothing about oh i work for ubisoft as art director or i work at whatever it was just like we're all the same level sharing our life stories and sharing uh, what made games special for us, and why we're in, like in this in this life journey, and and I and I think that's what's one of the most impactful ones. But after that, I think I always try to find those moments in whatever conference I'm in uh, with different people, and just like have time to not care about missing something that is on the schedule, to just connect on a deeper level uh, with people that I care about in the conference. Yeah, that's the real benefit, I think, of going to in-person events where, wherever you can is is those kind of special connections that, that you might not get uh, otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I almost stole, stole a glass from the BAFTA uh, nominee party this year with Tim Schafer, which was like the best thing ever. Uh, I didn't get to like take a picture or anything else, but we plotted a way to try to steal it. We figured out we couldn't because there's like a bunch of girls around and we only had like the little, you know, bags that the, that's only carry your phone and nothing else. <laughs> but we almost <laughs> stole a bath of glass. <laughs> To be fair, I feel like when when networking with game devs out of a, a super game dev environment, it's it's so easy to become super mischievous and be like, oh, so what do you think about this? And oh, that that looks like it's not nailed down. <laughs> we could totally take this. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's crazy the amount of times I've uh, brought up how embarrassing my nieces and nephews can be just to just to game devs I only met that day to be like yeah you know one of my nieces got stuck in a chair just as you do 
<laughs> so, like, it's it's nice when um, the game dev is sort of turned off at the game dev events, and which and which is like humans that also have game dev as a backup topic. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, with all these uh, networking events, I'm curious: have you guys seen any unique ways that game devs have networked, or anything that you thought was a super efficient way of networking? Ooh. Uh, I think being, if there's an efficient way of networking, I would love to know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think networking takes time, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's like you've got to have different touch points with, some, with just one person, maybe three or four times before anything further might, might kind of come of it. Um, I think there, um, I heard, in fact, it was Kwang's um, talk at after EGX, and he, sp he spoke about how, which I thought was quite interesting, is like, if you, whenever you're at a talk, try and sit in the front row, because, which uh, for a lot of people, myself included, is like, uh, idea of hell, you don't want to do that. I'd rather <laughs> just be right at the back, and then I can kind of sneak out if I need to. Um, but it's like, go to the front, and then, if there are any photos being taken that might get posted on the website, you will probably be on there because you're on the front row. Um, and then the person that's speaking or um, they they will sort of, you're, you're right there in front of them. So if you were to talk to them afterwards, they can connect you to what to what they were doing earlier. And it kind of gives you a way of of maybe approaching them and, and um, they go, oh yeah, like you're right there. And, and also asking questions at talks as well kind of mm -hmm. so that people who are on the stage kind of if you were to meet them afterwards or approach them afterwards they can you already have that connection there i i i'm a suspect because i i, I wrote a pesha kusha talk about networking uh just for this uh fuck gamer helsinki uh it, and i i i'm i'm going to put all uh, everything online i just want to to page it like nicer than uh, how it is because it's a special cliche, just like images uh, passing. Uh, so I want to put like the text of the talk together. Uh, but one thing that I did is just like uh, I connected networking with like the playbook of like Barney Stinson and how I met your mother, <laughs> like trying to do all of those crazy things. But of course, that, that's much for fun. But I think having little um, cues for how to do and when are always like very nice. Like how you describe uh, in the in the event that you went to, there was like, oh, ask questions about this or ask questions about that. Uh, women in games normally have um, like a, a, a list of questions as well in their net networking and career events uh, to guide uh, the new people or people that haven't had that experience yet. I think one of the unique ways that the digital events brought was like those um, roulette type of things that you, you you just like enter and you don't know who is going to show up or you just like connect to someone and then there's a timer. So there's like three minutes. And so if you, if it's terrible, you can like get away <laughs> out of it. <laughs> and, and yeah, so for me, it would be like some of the like the unique ways that that we're doing those networking nowadays. But for example, I don't like to do that. Uh, I I do that in real life. I like art car mode. I just go and rush and roulette everyone and say, "Oh, hi, I'm Fallen. Nice to meet you. Hi, hi, hi," <laughs> and, and and go around. But yeah, I I think there's not anything as like like this unique best way to do it. Something that is connecting with people, right? I think that that really goes to what type of personality you have. Um, like, are you more of a quiet person? Then probably you don't, you are not good at going to, you know, a party and and being, you'd just be uncomfortable, not in your means. So I think if you are that, maybe something like you're describing uh, of being this front row and like just asking questions there in like the safe environment that people are seeing you, that will work very well. Um, if you're like me, <laughs> you just go to parties and do like have you met Ted with everyone. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I, I think it, it. I think the uniqueness already comes from different types of people doing that networking experiences. 
Yeah, that makes a lot a lot of sense. And um, I was in a fortunate position this year to actually be up on a, a panel talking about all things game development and how you would uh, go about designing a game. And I could remember who asked me a question and I could remember some of the faces on the front row, but as the rows went further and further back, it was very difficult to remember that they were part of the crowd. So we had, I had like a few people come up to me and be like, oh, I was part of, part of the crowd in, in your talk. And I was like, ah, I don't know you. Um, but then in like the first few rows, I could distinctly remember who they were. Cause I was like, oh, you asked this question. It's a great question. Or um, you were wearing a brightly yellow top. So I, I, I would remember this. <laughs> Because I remember in a few of the events that I've gone to, people usually wear like super bright colors or unique pieces of clothing. Just then there's that little like little thing that you can remember them by. Because I remember on my first few events, I would wear these dungarees that have like rainbow dinosaurs on them. And I'm like, yeah, I was the rainbow di dinosaur person that you met at this event a few years back. So as well as like sitting in the front row, I feel like it's a, it's a good way to... Um, have people remember you so then you don't just like blend into the hundreds if not thousands of people that you met at a game dev event yeah i think um i, I was actually that's just reminded me of someone that i spoke to uh called tim and i met him at a warrington games uh, meet and he said that um he brings cookies with him to <laughs> events. that's uh, a great plan yeah it's actually a pretty good idea <laughs> yeah so and that's like the icebreaker, right? It's like, do you want a cookie? There we go. <laughs> and then you get talking. It's like immediately you have an in in it. Um, because I think that that's the hardest thing. I think for so for a lot of people is the initial mm -hmm. um, contact, right? It's like we're all there. Well, most people are there to connect and to network, but you don't want to go up to them being like hire me, like straight away, you know, or, or something like along those lines. You, and so, yeah, something like you were saying about what type of pet do you have or ha wearing an item like a hat or dungarees or something that's maybe a bit of a, a sentence starter um, and bringing cookies in, I uh, feel like it's a, <laughs> a good one as well. Yeah, like I remember on uh, my first few days of, of being at Shark Mob, I was like super grateful for the opportunity, but then I realized I'd be sitting in a room with a bunch of strangers that I didn't know. So I was like, I know, I'll make a bunch of brownies. So then... If they like the brownies therefore they'd like me <laughs> and i remember that went super well but uh that does mean that i've had to make brownies for any big occasion ever since oh, joking yeah. shark mom so it's, it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> <laughs> but it does mean that i get to trial run any uh baking recipe that way to be like oh i've added honeycomb into these brownies yeah. what do you think <laughs> i guess i guess if you ever wanted to give up that title you just may accidentally make a terrible batch Oh yeah, exactly. I put Marmite in them. Oh, oh my mistake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, uh, I remember at uh, a game dev event that I went to. Uh, I think it might have also been developed Brian. That's a pretty good highlight actually. Now that I think about it, um, there was someone at one of the booths who just had a QR code, and they mentioned that like. They talk to so many people like, every day that it's hard to just like open up LinkedIn or open up Twitter on their phone and just immediately start um, like adding people on the social network event and uh, social network platform. Sorry. Um, so what they had was just like a little QR code that linked to uh, a link tree, which had links to their Twitter and their and their uh, LinkedIn and website as well. And I thought that was like a super great way of uh, just giving someone your social platforms without having to like worry about internet or um, worry that you misspelt their name on like a, on a platform or something. So I thought that was super interesting. And they were even like giving them stickers to be like, Hey, if the internet isn't working at the moment, just keep the sticker and then you can scan it later. And I was like, that's such a great way. Cause that's yeah. the, the one issue with, with technology in uh, large events is that the internet just, plummets <laughs> it's so hard to connect to anything while you're at these events which is good because then you can talk to more people but it's unfortunate if you actually want to continue that connection digitally yeah i think um so many so many uh devs bring like kind of merch as well maybe not something like develop brighton but something like egx where they're on the show floor it's like tote bags free pencils rubbers or whatever just like with their with their logo or with 
uh, like a QR code or something. Maybe not a QR code on the pencil. I don't really know how that would work. But um, yeah, I think just having little things like that just to make more of an impact but n not be too overbearing as well I think is quite important. It's like, oh, that person was cool and I like their pencil. <laughs> Um, and then, and then, yeah, and then, then there's always opportunities for follow up afterwards. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And even going to just like normal events away from game dev, if it's if it's a case of like here's a free sticker to remember this event, I, I'm more inclined to remember that event. Um, so, for example, I uh, recently got a new tattoo, which is no shock because I I'm, I always get loads of tattoos, so it's fine. <laughs> um, but uh, recently they brought out a whole bunch of new stickers for their, for their tattoo shop. So I just grabbed a bunch of them and they're such unique designs. It, it makes me want to go back and get more stickers, but then I'm also in the uh, predicament of being like, well, if I'm going to go back and get a sticker, I might as well get another tattoo. <laughs> so, so it's having little like novelty items are a great way to just like bring back people to the memory of uh, having that initial conversation they uh, that um just yeah that social memory yeah definitely and like a even at the save point event that i went to at develop right and they have like a they handed out little pin badges um mm -hmm. and thanks to that pin badge i'm now able to remember the name of it because there were so many different events that were going on at the same time and i can be i can remember the memories of talking about cats in a round table while eating brisket it was just like ah oh, that's a good time i like that <laughs> so just having like little things it's 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 nice but then it does have the issue of if you go to an event where everyone's handing out things it's it's great to have free pencils but then it's hard to remember who gave you that pencil <laughs> yeah <laughs> have there ever been any uh, novelty items that you've ever picked up that were different to the rest of the ones? So was there any like unique item or special item that you picked up in your uh, objective of uh, networking at an event? Oh, I have like the most special one from this year at, um, uh, at Pocket Gamer Helsinki because um, so, so I am an ambassador for Women in Games since 2020, and I started working for them uh, this year. So I work as an ambassador coordinator. And the, the sponsor for um, the individual ambassador program is um, Keywords. And, and they, were, they were there at Pocket Gamer. And uh, I was like, I was connecting with them, like saying, how appreciative I, I think it's very important for companies to have that as their um as their goals and they are they are i think they're like a translating company but like also other servers and things like that and saying like how, how important is for games that the, the ecosystem is supporting uh each other because again we're just talking about developers right but it's like that these events are not only about developers are, are about again just the services and the um, uh, the, the financiers, right? The publishers and the investors, and and, and I think that's the, the big part of all of this. It's just like there's an ecosystem that makes games uh, function, and and we had the the, the most amazing time, just like uh, going over all all these uh, social um, elements are are so important for for the development of the industry and and etc. and and just like connecting over life. And and so by the end of the event, um, Peter like approached me and he was like, Mafalda, it was so nice to meet you. And I have this like special gift that we only give to, you know, like our clients and things like that, but I have one for you. And so he gave me like this Parker special like edition that has oh, like wow. the, it has like the keywords logo on it. So I haven't touched it because it's so pretty. And I feel like <laughs> I, I'm a like an adult. <laughs> that have like a special pen that I can sign things with. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, it was very special that just like our connection at that event uh, makes him like he, he thought about it and he like he found me afterwards. I was like, this is your last day. Here's like a, a, a thing for you. And, uh, and, yeah. and so that's that's my special thing. Wow. I mean, to be fair, that is, that is a pretty special pen. I wish I could say that my pens were, um, were that spectacular. I've just got uh, Sharpies and basic barriers. 
Um, but, oh, yeah, no, go no, ahead, sorry. I, I was just... I think in terms of special items, I can't really think of any, to be honest. I mean, the cookies thing, I wasn't there. I wish I was for the to get the cookies. <laughs> I just heard about the cookies. Maybe there never were any cookies. I don't know. But um, uh, I think, yeah, I think you, you raise a really good uh, point about how everyone recognises that having something special or something small can add value to your interaction. But then everyone's doing it. <laughs> yeah. So everyone has a pencil now. Everyone's got stickers. Everyone's got all this like badges or, or whatever it might be. So I think, yeah, maybe, maybe there's something there then for um, uh, people listening is to think about maybe something else that, that you could bring that, that is unlike something that you've seen yourself at one of these events right yeah uh, but i would say like the best thing you can bring is yourself right like oh it, yeah it, like it just I, i'm not saying that it doesn't help but if it, if you're like doing that just because you want to be remembered at an event like i will remember for the gesture not for the object itself like if you would give yeah. me like a a deck a, a like a plastic deck uh something like that and he, he had the same sentiments i would cherish as, as the at the same the same way yeah. um so i just think it just depends why why are you giving something to someone and how are you connecting to that person and and, and why is that moment uh i saw a very cool thing which is like people doing like those cards where you can say where you have met each other or at least just like printing one side of your business card and then the other it's blank so you can write something down like because that way it's not something that oh you just give a card you give a card and like a note of we met talking about this or we met we met to this place and so I think that's a, like a cool idea as well. Yeah, I've actually just remembered as well. So Jade, mm. um, she has um, uh, like Pokemon cards. <laughs> so cool. Like so, it's like it's got Jade composer blah, blah blah, but it's kind of laid out like a Pokemon card, and I thought it was really cool. I, nice. saw, I saw I saw them giving them out to someone and I was like oh. <laughs> light bulb <laughs> that, that is a, like, that is a yeah. wonderful idea <laughs> yeah yeah I feel like especially going to events like EGX where they sell Pokemon cards and they can grade Pokemon cards you'd be like how much can I get graded for this <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's a, that's a great little thing to advise especially people who are just buying uh business cards as are just in the industry it's it's a good way to be like hey if you leave this side blank it'd be a great way to then write where you came from or who you are or if you're a massive pokemon fan it's 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 a great great way to um to give someone something small but then still slightly thinking outside the box so even if you're like not able to get a custom pen with your name engraved on it it's it's still a nice way to uh to be like, hey, this is my uniqueness. Do with it, do with it as you will. <laughs> but yeah, with so many events out there and so many events uh, that are growing. For example, your event in Liverpool. You say that it's uh, only been like a few months, but it's a success story. So I'm curious if are there any events that you'd like to attend in the future, or, or any events that you'd like to make in the future. Um, so uh, well. Yeah, so the, the Liverpool one is actually, we're having our first official kind of speaker event in January. Um, so very much looking forward to that. A little bit nervous. I hope it all goes well. Um, don't get any technical issues or difficulties or anything. Um, <laughs> uh, EGX is just always, like, I, I will always go there. Um, I think mainly because of the pricing as well. I think that's something that... Um, maybe not discussed as much, I think, is, is the pricing of a lot of events and in terms of like the tickets. Um, so, but I, I'll always be going to EGX. I'd love to go to GIC again. And if I can get to the next develop, I think I would, would love to do that um, as well. And then just constantly keeping my ear to the ground for local ones, Manchester ones, um, more livable ones as well, of course. Just trying to get to as many as you can, really, because in just seeing what sticks, I think that's, if you have the if you have the ability to get out and and get to these events um, without obviously I don't know breaking the bank or taking up too much of um, your other kind of life commitments, if you're able to get to these events, 
go to them um, and and bring all these things that we've spoken about today with you. Maybe maybe not all the pencils and all the cookies, <laughs> but, but the but the the kind of the, the tips to just kind of because the more because it's it's you kind of have to practice it as well. I think. Yeah. It's the first couple of events you go to, you it might not um, come away with any connections, but at least you've gone and at least you've made that initial um, uh, action. Um, and and so you're, if your intent is correct, then you just kind of keep going. So yeah, I'll just be going to as many as I can, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with what you said of like, just practice. Because for me, like, I think, for example, Trojan or uh, Ozina Garden was like a, a big uh, thing where I practice being in an international event, so what that meant, like what that structure, what that um, what that energy also, because it was like a full day event. It's from morning to night and there's all, so many things happening. And then you have like this FOMO of not wanting to lose anything. And then like the first year, I think I, I it was like four days and I had like the four days all scheduled out before super planned and, and did all of that. And I went to all the, the, the talks that I went to. Um, but like the second year, I think was the first one where I did, I like, I missed some talks and I went to some like alternative events or alternative activities that was happening. And then I think only like in the fourth, five is when I was like confident enough to sometimes say, yeah, I don't need to go to one more. Like it's, it's not that talks are not nice, but it's like, you need to open opportunities to connect with people in other ways, uh, to approach people in a more. Uh, not look at my portfolio way, but hey, like how how is, how's life? How are you doing? Like, and because I think that's that's one big part, right? It's like not working. Sure, it it is like a, a professional tool, but something that you use to uh, to find um, job opportunities, to open doors, to 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 get knowledge. But it, it's all about sharing. So you need to give first as well i think that's a, a very important part and it's it's more about creating the connections themselves so it's not and and i think you see that like in the, in the, comp the composer world like the joke about like doing the the dynex and all of that and, and it, you see a lot of like because of that competition, you see a lot of like people going to events and be like, oh, oh so you need a composer for your game or whatever. And it's like, don't be like that. Like just say, or, or artists do the same thing. It's just like, oh yeah, but it, if you ever need like a freelance and, and, and it's more about, well, I do these things and I think like this and this is my life experiences and this is the way I think about games. And then another, another person can say, oh, I really like that. Like, I think you might find, or I have this friend that is doing a project that may connect to that or whatever. Like if you share more about yourself, then you are, it's, it's easier to get, to get connected. Um, and, and yeah, just to, to, to not <laughs> go away from your question, <laughs> Nicole, <laughs> uh, it's, I, I have a bunch of events I want to attend in the future. So my goal now, like I, I'm doing great. I, I'm, I'm being able to go to one more event than that I haven't gone in the past uh, each year. Um, I, I would love to go to a GDC one day, but that kind of breaks the bank, right? So we know that that, that is like that is like the the big whale type of event for us in in the in Europe is like it's very very expensive to go. Um, yeah, that makes that makes sense. And like I feel like the the price limit is always something that. Um, can almost gate off some people who want to yeah. attend some events. So going to the free option of the develop Brighton is a great way to to jump in there. But there is also the the option to buy a ticket, which is more of like the talks only. But I yeah. feel like with an event like develop Brighton, it's more for the networking than anything because there are so many game devs out there and there are so many events in and around the event um, that it's kind of hard to sit down and do a listen to a talk when there's like, oh, this person over there is giving free ice cream and like it's sponsored by this this uh, community and there's an event over there at the same time as three different talks. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's nice to go to these free events and um, and even there's like paid events that are not breaking bank level for you, right? There's like ten ten dollars or twenty or uh, euros for us. Um, well, you guys have pawns, so yeah, <laughs> you 
the 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 audience understands but <laughs> and i and i because i think like it's good to to have the the thought that it's like you are investing in yourself and in your future by attending those things i i, I completely agree with you with the free things because like i've been to all of those especially like with the digital revolution of covid right everything went online so um being online i was able to go to things that i couldn't before well i went to the gdc online version and i went to um white nights online and i went to like a, a bunch of different events that i couldn't go uh other way but um i would always say to have like try to go to your local things and to your free local things like the meets like uh things like that but have like budget to go to like one thing a year or, or whatever that that could open your horizons because i think what you were saying marek about I, i went to poland and it was different because i was just like uh f for me again it's the same way to when when coming to game uh games con and dev con which is like getting out of my local area and my local comfort zone and going to these other events that are like a little bit bigger yes it's a little bit more expensive but it just opens the way that you think about the world and what game dev is No, that makes sense. And like uh, linking back to what you said earlier about networking, it's it's good to then put that networking into practice when you're going to all these different events and meeting all like different uh, international uh, game developers because the way you might network with someone in your hometown might be different to how you would network to someone who lives halfway across the country. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing that I super struggled with first joining the industry because I, all I really had to provide were, were brownies, but it was it's hard to make brownies for every single event that you go to. Um, and thankfully with the, the help from the Limit Break program that I joined uh, this year, I was recommended a book called um, How to Talk to Anyone About Everything. Um, yeah. And it was written by James Williams. And that, that I feel like really helped me because it um, made me list five different questions that I could say to someone meeting for the first time at these events. They'll say like, oh, what have you worked on? And how many NDAs are you under right now? And just, <laughs> just stuff like that. So it's it's a great way to then put those networking tips and tricks into practice when you're attending events that you might need to catch a, catch a flight for or a train or, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, that concludes all the questions that I had uh, for today. But I was wondering if you guys have any extra tips or tricks that you'd like to to say to the audience about networking at game dev events or just game dev events in general. Um, I guess, yeah, try, try to get as many as, to as many as you can, whether that's in person or online, um, and don't oh, don't don't set too high of an expectation on yourself. Don't don't go with the with the thought of oh I'm going to make 20 connections and uh, just go with the intention to meet people, talk about your passions, um, and connect with people on that kind of level. Um, and then I guess it's the follow up afterwards. I would always say for for networking in particular, two weeks after the event, send a quick LinkedIn or Twitter message or something. And say hey. I've checked out your game since, or I've checked out what you're doing since, and I love what you're doing. Like, hopefully, catch you at the next thing or something small. Um, and just and yeah, and if you go with the right intentions, people will feed off that and and yeah. will um, connect with you in that in that way. And be genuine. Be genuine. I couldn't agree more with with what you just said. I think definitely following up. It, it's a, it's a struggle, especially because like if you don't plan for that, like. I have, a, I have a plan for following up like okay if you put i don't know two days three days like a week of your time uh, for an event n never forget to have like th the time to do that afterwards and not be engulfed by all the, the work that you didn't did uh during that time and, and now you need to catch up to um and i think one of the most important things uh besides being genuine and and go go after um um the connection you made like just to because it's, it's not a connections again uh, you said before that it's a lot a, a ongoing process right it's, it's not about like the first time that you you meet it's about like showing up consistently like uh, talking to each other like showing online whatever um 
is to if you don't have things in your area or don't be afraid to 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 go after them to start like do a coffee break online or uh, hang out with with your three game developer friends and call it a meet and put it online and say we are doing this because that way other people can see and other people in your location might might be able to see and go uh, sometimes it's not even people in your location like we did um, a game dev meet a, a game dev Lisbon meetup in Coimbra which is another city around here and it's almost all people from <laughs> from Lisbon we went like two cars from Lisbon full there and then there's like three or four developers from from Coimbra that show up but it's like but now they're connected with us and now we have we have that space it's like don't be afraid of um of starting things out and if they're not as big as you would like them to be um they will grow with consistency um and and don't be afraid to just talk to people <laughs> at the end of the day networking is just talking to people you, you don't need to have like ulterior motives of like oh this is this is a hiring uh decision person this is a lead or this is talk to everyone as they have something to offer to you uh if you're talking to a student, if you're talking to an industry veteran, if you're talking uh, to someone that hires or to someone that doesn't, they all have something important um, to share, like their perspective, their way to think about uh, games, the way to think about the world. And uh, yeah, treat, treat everyone as they, are, as they are important to you. No, I, I couldn't agree more with what you both said. And I can, I also just want to add the fact of just just be kind as well. Like, uh, like uh, it's it's when, when you're going to these events, it's uh, it's difficult enough to network. But when you're just like being kind, it's like oh, you, you, people might remember you a little bit more than if you were like throwing f bombs everywhere. And <laughs> I mean that like, people haven't, thankfully. But it's just just you know just put extra kindness on. It's always nice. <laughs> Um, and thankfully, in, with us being part of the GDL community, we have uh, different resources in which people can also network as well, because we've got the Discord and we've got um, the podcast where people can then leave comments and continue the discussion. And then we can sort of build a network from that and just be like, hey, this is this is a great podcast episode. And I'd like to chat to you guys about what you said in this episode. So it's it's with with gdl we're able to open up more opportunities for people to talk to each other and also like have a audio or, or video discussion as well about the things that we like to talk about most um so yeah if you're part of the different uh communities or also shout out game dev london as well so. or game dev Lisbon or game dev uh, liverpool <laughs> uh but yeah that that is it for this episode today um I've been your host, Nicola, and you can find me at uh, Humphreys Media on basically most platforms. Um, <laughs> and big thank you to uh, Mafalda and Marek for uh, being on the episode today and talking all about game dev events. Where can people go and find more about you guys? Uh, so for me, people can just like uh, search uh, Somewhat Mary in social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to connect with Game Dev Lisbon as well, uh, search gamedevlisbon.com and Game Dev Lisbon and all social media as well. It's our, and, uh, our handler. And uh, yeah, excited to connect with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at MJ Smagala. Um, and also if anyone's based in Liverpool or Northwest or just UK or happens to be coming to Liverpool, um, you can find us uh, um, on Twitter as well at Liverpool GDM. Uh, we've got this, uh, the same Discord name as well. Nice. Uh, that's that's fantastic, guys. Thank you very much, and thanks to everyone who tuned in. And be sure to check out Game Dev London for the latest updates. Uh, and we're all there as well, so come say hi if you like. It's we're super super nice, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise we shall see you there and. See you the same time next week with a, with a brand new episode of the Game Dev London podcast. <laughs> bye, everyone. Cheers. Bye. bye. Thanks, Nicola.